What do singing, dancing and acting have in common? I'm sure you can think of many answers to that question, but math probably wasn't one of them. Singing, dancing and acting aren't exactly what you might expect to see in a math class. Are you a math person or an arts person? Do you stay away from crowds and like to work quietly on a problem? Or do you love to be in the thick of the action, collectively experiencing a music or dance performance whilst dancing and singing along? Or have you, like me, always found these kinds of dichotomies unhelpful? I'm Anushka Fitzherbert. I've been a math teacher for over 10 years and a drama teacher for four years. I have studied and researched about math education in both the University of Oxford and Warwick University. I'm also a dancer, Indian classical dance and swing dance. And in my youth, I was part of a theatre group. We toured with an award-winning play in India. My love for both math and the performing arts led me to find ways to combine the two in my teaching. In this course, you will learn how to sing, dance and act through math class. I will show you how math can be experienced and explored through the performing arts. I'll show you how dance, rhythm and acting can help your students better understand underlying mathematical structures or grasp the nuance of math problems and get a feel for numbers and shapes in a whole new way. Despite their unlikely connection, the performing arts are a powerful tool for helping students find a joyful way into math learning. Let me tell you a story about two people. When Victoria Gould was a child, she knew she wanted to be an actor. She managed to make her dream real. Uh, she worked in London's West End and with the acclaimed physical theatre company, Complicity. But as a teenager, she had what she calls a guilty secret, math. She says, I've always known that I wanted to be an actor and I've always loved maths. I felt like I had two brains. But the people around her told her it was not possible to pursue both mathematics and acting. She says, at school, I was quite pushed into the arts and used to secretly go into bookshops and read maths books when I should have been studying high school art subjects. Now, she decided to finally indulge her secret love of math and went on to do a physics degree. But all throughout, she also acted. When she was offered the role of Hamlet at the West End, she decided to change course to acting full time. Marcus du Sautoy. Now, he is an acclaimed mathematician from the University of Oxford, and he talks about a phone call he got from the theatre director of that same, uh, that same group, Complicity, about a play involving 20th century mathematicians. It was called A Disappearing Number. Now, the theatre group wanted an expert to help them with the play. And the director, he began the conversation by saying, uh, you probably don't know who we are. But de Sautoy interrupted saying, well, I do. Whenever my maths is going badly, it's you I want to run off and join. <laughs> now, it turned out that as an undergraduate student at Oxford, de Sautoy had taken part in several workshops that Complicity had run and he loved the way they used the theatrical space. He had always seen parallels 
in his love for math and love for theatre. And complicity embodied that perfectly. So, of course, he said yes. And so these two people were brought together in a happy collaboration. An actor who loves math and a mathematician who loves theatre. Like Victoria Gould, many children are given the message that they can be one or the other, a math person or an arts person. But there are many examples of people who enjoy both. And it turns out, based on recent research, that teaching one in the context of another can really help students thrive. For example, Susan Jarofsky, an associate professor of mathematics, of mathematics education at the University of British Columbia in Canada, calls math and the arts a powerful, productive, pedagogical pairing. I love those four Ps. She feels it is important to move away from school curriculum that separate the hard disciplines of mathematics and sciences from the soft disciplines of the visual and performing arts. She believes that when the connections and the links that already exist between these two strands are revealed to students through an arts-based math pedagogy, it can, in her words, help you reach students who are more oriented towards the arts than the sciences. In 2014, a study on the relationship between theatre, arts, student literacy and mathematics, researchers Iona, Wellsteck and Tiboni showed that students from schools that integrated theatre arts into the curriculum outperformed their counterparts in both math and language. In this course, you will learn about those links and the connections between math and different types of performing arts like dance, drama and music or rhythm. You will also learn about ways of integrating performing arts into math lessons and the other way around, so students can have a holistic and full experience using their minds and their bodies. With this, you can have children who are more arts oriented find a way into math through performance. You can also learn how to use math to help children who are shy performers so that children can build confidence and self-assurance in all aspects of themselves. And what about the story I shared right at the beginning of this lesson? What happened to Victoria Gould and Marcus de Sotoy? Well, after they met at Complicity and found their mutual love for math and theatre, the two of them teamed up. They produced some fascinating shows, including X and Y and I is a strange loop. Their plays at their heart explored mathematics. They showed thousands of people how math and theatre can live and breathe and flourish in a shared space. I'm Anushka Fitzherbert. See you in our next lesson when you'll find out how to create that same space in your classroom.